Okay, so the first five properties we have are um, owned by um, Mr. Ribellini. Um, as I was writing these reports up, I comped them all out the same way I've been doing. Um, I realized the, the um, proposed assessments seem a little out of line. Um, I proposed to Mr. Rivellini the, the numbers that I'm about to give to you. He's in agreement that um, uh, he feels these are, are fair numbers. Um, if these are voted on, he will drop his appeal. We'll um, uh, change the assessments on these. And uh, so the first one's going to be 107 Barry Street. Gotcha. Um, this is a, a, a three-story wood frame building built in 1890. Um, I don't know how much detail you guys really want me to get into about it, but it's a, it's a C-rated uh, average quality home, uh, given total depreciation of 33%. Uh, when comped out to four similar properties, um, you'll see that the assessment on this property is $137,000 per unit. Um, with these multi-unit properties, we tend to break it down at a, a value per unit. Um, so it, it is a little bit higher than the four similar properties that it's comped out to. Um, we talked a little bit last week with, um, with the Jacobs properties about the three, the three approaches to, to value. Um, none of the Rivellini properties have income reported on them. So we're just using the, um, the sale approach and the assessment. Um, so we're comping the, um, the building out to similar properties as far as their assessments go. Um, so if you see down at the, at the bottom of uh, page two, the assessment is at 137,000 uh, per unit as we were just talking about. Uh, when comped out to similar properties right up in, in the same neighborhood, um, you can see it's more in line to be at 123,000 per unit. And so your proposal is to uh, reduce yeah. it to 123,000 per unit or 369 total, yep. and he would then withdraw his appeal. Yep. So the conclusion on the last page will be uh, the breakdown of what the current value is and where I feel it should be, and what Mr. Rodini has agreed to. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, Bob. How come it was so high to begin with? What caused? them to come up with 410 and what caused you to drop it down to 369? Some of the issues are access. Um, they weren't able to get into a lot of um, commercial, uh, a lot of rental units. So sometimes there's a difference in depreciation, there's a difference in condition. Um, when, when we went through the first grievance process, we had 100 and, 193 um, appeals come through in a two week period. State statute st um, states that we have to turn decisions around in 14 days. Um, so it's a little hard to give a full appraisal to every single one. Um, so some of them only get 10 or 15 minutes look at. You know, everything kind of seems to be in line. But then as you start doing a, a fuller, deeper look into them, then you start realizing, yeah, it is kind of out of line. Um, and also, I mean, Mr. Rivellini's own property in Montpelier for 50 years. He knows real estate. So he brought to my attention, like, these five seem kind of out of line, here's why. I agree. So what was the reason why? Which was which? it depreciation? Was it condition? You know, what? These, yeah, these are depreciation. Um, they, were, they weren't they um, were comped properly to, this, to neighboring properties. So what, what they were doing is they were comparing them to properties that were in better conditions. So they get less depreciation. OK. Yeah, that, that, I sort of have the same question about a lot of these, because when, yeah, we, when we go to look at properties, yeah. You know, we're, we have a hard time knowing what, they're, what they did, you sure. know, with the condition and all that, and what they started with the condition at and what you reduced it to. Yeah. You'll see on the, um, the record card in the very back there, it will give you um, what the reappraisal contractor is giving them for depreciation. Right. But what was it before? It hasn't changed yet. The, I'll change that after the agreements have been made. Okay, so we change that from 33% to yeah, it will adjust it down to, to make it um, make uh, the numbers work. Yes, okay, so you're just increasing you're just increasing increasing the depreciation based on physical condition, or is that all? Yep, okay, yep, and it's going to be pretty much the same for all of them. Yeah, any other questions? So, when you're so make sure I follow that. 
When you're saying in the report total depreciation is 33%, that's just based on what they did, and you're after you change the valuation, then that's what changes the depreciation. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna raise the depreciation higher, and it's gonna give it it's gonna give it a, re a reduction in value. <laughs> So the higher the depreciation, uh, the less valuable the property is. Sure. You changed the depreciation because you felt the condition wasn't the same as it was before on yes. all these properties? Yes, we're going to change it. Okay, yes. Okay. Because what you're saying, Bob, I think is that it seems like this is backwards picking a number and then setting the depreciation to make the number work, but uh, but you want to make sure that there's a basis for that. Right, and that's what I was trying to figure out, what the basis was for changing the value based on comparable sales and other properties. Things. Depreciation. Cool. Is, is there a motion to approve this uh, resolution? So I said we could do it collectively. Oh. Maybe that's not a good idea. Just assuming you know, each one is a separate property. So it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Move on to the next one. Uh, next property is 178 Ferry Street. It is another three unit building. Uh, built around 1900. It's graded as a C plus or an average plus quality. Um, again, this was measured by the, the exterior by the uh, reappraisal contractor who did not gain access to the inside. Um, when comped out to these four sales, the, um, the assessed value of $154,000 per unit on the subject property. Um, is a little, it is higher than the four that is compared to. Um, again, on the second page, the, there was no income reported on this property. <clears throat> when compared to neighboring properties as far as their assessed value, um, again, they fall in that 123,000 per unit. Um, the subject property is 154,000 per unit. So my recommendation on this one um, would be to lower the assessment from 461,300, um, lowering it to a value of 120 per 120,000 per unit, or a total assessment of 360,000 dollars. So question on that. I know yep. this one is reduced by over 100,000 dollars. Yep. What could make that much of a difference? Um, so it has to, one of the things about the, um, the reappraisal is that everyone's got to be treated fairly and equitably. So the, the biggest driving factor on this one is going to be um, equitable um, assessment. Because these, one, two, three, the four um, equity comps that is compared to, they're all um, neighboring properties. And the, the, assess, the assessment per unit on those, the 123 is kind of the top end. Um, so, I mean, if we left him at 154, we would have to bring everybody else up to, to make it equitable, if that makes sense. Yeah, we're going to see. So you have exactly the same pumps on this one as the last one, but you came to 120 per unit on this one versus 123 per unit on the last one? Mm -hmm. What's the reason for that? This one is a depreciation unit, I think, as well. Um, this one's got, a, this one has some unfinished um, if you look at the back of the list or the, um, the record card. So it has the same depreciation, but there's some unfinished to it. I see. In that same depreciation column. Uh, so that makes it less valuable. And do you know what the unfinished space is? Is that attic or? I believe it was up on the second floor. Okay. Um, Oh, Sorry to ask another question, but yeah. did you get in to see these properties? I have not. No. So the change was made based on what information? The change is going to be made based on um, the equity comps and, and comparing it to the sales. <clears throat> okay, and you but were you saying before the equity with this place isn't 
worse condition than the other ones? Mm -hmm. yeah. But you didn't, no one was in there to see it. So some, at some point, um, you can see, there's, there's good records on my predecessor, if and when he's been there. So as these, um, as time goes on, if he's, if nothing has changed, the whatever condition it was in the last time somebody was there is left until it gets re-inspected. So these are based on historic inspections. Is that under activity information? Yes, it is. So it looks like somebody was the appraiser uh, for their... Matt Majeski did the exterior of this one, yeah. And is, is there a way to tell in this activity information section when or whether someone got into the building? There is. Um, okay. Under that field activity, um, you'll see that the first thing there is a grievance denial. Mm -hmm. The second one is an inspection by Matt Krajewski. That's the, um, the reappraisal contractor. Mm -hmm. um, on ten six, 6 somebody measured and left a card, John Gurton. Um, October of 2018, um, the former assessor measured and, and inspected the property. So it's, it's all based on historical data. So it's measured and inspected means got inside? I believe on this one he saw, I, I think he saw the, um, uh, the unfinished, but he didn't go through the apartments. Okay. Any other questions? Is there a motion to approve this one? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm not going to vote. Is that possible? Just yeah, to, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, next one is 100 and, or it's 184 Berry Street. Um, current current um, assessment is three hundred thirty-two thousand eight hundred dollars. Uh, it's a two-unit building built in 1890. Uh, the assessment breaks down to one hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars per unit. Uh, when compared to the the five comparables on the front page. Um, it, Falls out, it falls above um, current market value of these five sales. Uh, again, there was no income reported on this property. Uh, equity comparisons to other two unit buildings uh, in the same neighborhood. Um, you can see the subject, like I said before, is at 166,000 per unit. Equity comparables fall in the 113 to 178 range. Um, given the condition and comparables to the, the equity comps, I would recommend a value of 143,000 per unit or a total assessment of $286,000. And is this because you think that uh, the this property is most similar or closest in condition to 192? Yes. And I'm curious about, I should have thought of this earlier, is, is it possible to uh, draw and make any generality, generalization about uh, price per unit uh, in terms of how many units in the building? Like is a, is a building that has more units, other things being equal? going to be worth more per unit or less per unit or economy of scale. Yeah, sometimes like, so when you get into the uh, the 15 unit on the uh, comparables of, of 282 Berry Street, um, when you get into bigger unit counts like that, there tends to be some um, smaller one bedrooms or studios. So it can fluctuate. So it's not a real exact science, but we're trying to get it into a, uh, a window of roughly what it should be worth per unit. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry, I just answered the first question. 
they have a choice whether to tell you income or not? I mean, given how much when we had Jacobs here, there was a big deal about income, but yet this person had reported no income on any of these. Statutorily, there is a fine of $100 if people don't report their income. That's it? Yes. For all that? of these properties, there were 100 per property? Per, per property. Um, people tend to be pretty guarded with yeah. their income. Right. Understandably so, um, but the city did very well as far as collecting data. Um, so with all the Jacobs properties last week, we don't put in their actual numbers because it's all confidential, but it's a, it's a, it's all taken and put into a spreadsheet. This one is, I don't, I'm not sure why they weren't reported on these properties. I wouldn't look well. Yeah, I'm sure. Happened? I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I mean, we covered it. Yeah, Rosie. I'm feeling really uncomfortable about how low that assessment is, okay. given what we assess ranch houses much further from downtown, much higher than this. Yeah, I think um, in this in these particular cases, it's location. Um, so if you look at the the um, property record card on the first page, the front page of it, you'll see that this is a, a traffic average neighborhood. So land values down here are going to drag uh, the assessments down mm. compared to um, one of the first ones we were talking about is up on Terrace Street. Terrace Street lots, they're anywhere between $125,000 and $130,000 for their lots. These are $77,000. Well, that's a big jump, 22. 22 is 31. Yeah. So the the land value didn't change really on any of that. We were just changing the condition. No, the land uh, since the last appraisal. You no, know, since the appeal, you didn't make any adjustments to the land value. I haven't made any adjustments to these properties at all. No. Right. Right. But is your proposal to change the land value or change no, the no. building value? No, no, no. Rosie was just asking why the difference um, of, of a right. property on Berry Street versus a ranch house out of town, and it's typically the land. You know, it's more valuable. Okay. And this bit plan has doubled its value, is my content. What's this? And this particular land has yeah. doubled its value since last year, since 22. If you look at the property card. Well, you have the card from the year before. Yeah, yeah if, you look, um, if you look at the property record card on the front side where it says Patriot up in the top right hand corner, yeah. um, over about in the middle of the property, you can see the land values. And it gives it's the historical data. Currently, the the land on this particular okay, property is seventy seven. I got it. Thirty one yeah. five. Okay. Yeah. So you can yeah. see you can see the Thank assessments you. as they change too. I noticed that. At all. And you can imagine. I'm not sure. Uh, that makes a difference. But you can imagine if some neighborhood and uh, Barry Street might be in that particular neighborhood where the neighborhood itself is getting to be a more attractive, desirable neighborhood and the whole place would uh, would go up for that reason. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Is there a motion to accept this? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, it's carried. 171? 171 Berry Street. Uh, and this is going to sound kind of repetitive, but these are all properties owned by the same owner. They're all, you know, if he has a tendency for, you know, certain types of properties he likes, it's going to be the same comps, um, similar, you know, similar recommendations. Um, this one is also a three unit building built in the early 1900s, uh, graded as C plus or average plus for quality. Uh, typical depreciation of 33%. Uh, current assessment breaks down to 144,000 per unit. Um, when comped out to the the uh, the four sales, it, it falls above um, what these units are selling for. Equity comps on the second page. Um, again, it's the same four comparisons because they're all in the same neighborhood, uh, owned by the same property owner. 
Um, their current assessment of 144,000 per unit falls above um, what is typical for that neighborhood of 123,000. So the recommendation on this one um, would also be 123,000 per unit for a total assessment of $369,000. So this, you're saying that this is essentially, this is roughly the same as 107 berries. Yeah, and the next one at 93, I mean, they're all, you know, kind of, mm -hmm. like I said, owned by the same, uh, same property owner. He maintains them all pretty similar. All right, is there a motion or questions? Is there a second? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, <clears throat> last one for Mr. Riverlini is 93 Berry Street. Again, same neighborhood, same uh, three, unit, three unit construction built in the late 1800s. Uh, another C plus or average plus uh, quality, same depreciation of 33%. Excuse me. The um, current assessment is 142,000 per unit. Um, that also falls above the the four comparable sales uh, shown on your on your sheet there. <clears throat> same equity comparisons, uh, same neighborhood, same properties. Um, the current assessment of 142,000 falls above the the um, typical 123,000. So the recommendation on this one is to um, to correct it to 123,000 per unit or $369,000 total assessment. Yeah, please. Did our higher contracted appraisers are these the? Uh, equities that they picked or are these that you this is mine so what did they use to determine the value uh, so when they did the, the reappraisal they use all sales so they're i mean they're doing you know 2930 properties so some of them some of them can be off but what they they, com they compiled 231 sales that happened between april 1 of 20 and april 1 of 2023 that's put into a database, then all these numbers are plugged in and it spits out numbers. Sometimes they don't get into some of these, so the depreciation's off a little bit, so. So they don't put in the same type of property in this ma major database, it's just you select in the end? They do. Justify so, what the change is? Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm defending either the, the current assessment or a recommendation of a new assessment. And here's why. It's, it's just a little deeper dig into. Uh, I, into I was just wondering why they could be so far off on this number of properties. By the same one? Well, I mean, there's, they did 3,000 parcels. You know, yeah. So, I mean, they, they, they can be off on some for sure. The question this one has land value higher than any other one. It's 81,000. The other ones are 77, 78, 79. It's also different size. The other, the other one is 0.15, and this is 0.25. No. And so there are differences. Okay. Yes, yeah, you can also, there, sometimes there is a, a neighborhood change. So as you're looking at that, um, that land value, you'll see XA, which is the traffic average. So sometimes it can be a change in neighborhood too, as neighborhoods change, um, starting value for land changes too. Well, right, then I think that would reflect not to be quite the same as the other one. I'm, I'm more challenging than you get with the same uh, 123 per unit that you get the one we just looked at and they had a different land value. Yeah, it's probably different sizes, it's all the same. I mean, is this, a, which one are we talking about? I understand that whatever caused the land value, I would think would be reflected in having a little bit higher assessment. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, if you're looking at the units are similar, and yet one has at least $2,000 more land value, you think the assessment our asset would be a little higher versus falling back to the, the ones we just take all the other ones. Um, no. You don't understand me. No, no. I, I understand. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, what you're saying is that if, uh, 
if the if this property, if this building, 93 Barry Street, is exactly the same or functionally the same. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a little different value for sure. Yeah. Well, but you got three in a row that you're assessing at 123 per unit. Yeah, so I'm, I'm suggesting that we drop that down to 369. When I make the adjustments, it's not going to be exactly 369 because of the difference in the land value. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah. I would hope so, but I couldn't see that in the numbers. Thank you. Yeah. So what you're saying is that the building that has a two thousand dollar more land value might eventually actually come in at three hundred seventy one instead of three hundred sixty nine right. because there's another two thousand dollars. Right. So we're changing just the building value on here and the land value will stay the same so the overall assessment will be higher than what's listed on your recommendation it should be it should be pretty close it, it won't be higher because they won't that's that's not the agreement that we have with the uh, with the homeowner I know it. fire away I mean we want to make sure we get this all right Well, it, it seems like part of what's going on here is that there's just a compromise being arrived at between the assessor and the property owner. Right. And uh, the question is, does the Board of Civil Authority think the compromise is reasonable enough that we'll accept it? Mm -hmm. Is the land... And I'm sorry, I had a sheet. I forgot what he was asking for a reduction. For this last one? For any of these. He, had, he put out his own number, right? I proposed a number to, oh, he, to he Steve. put out one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so eventually, you know, one day, Steve may start selling some of these properties, mm -hmm. and then we'll have some... Uh, comparable sales of these these ha buildings that are virtually identical to each other mm -hmm. and that could have an effect on on the per unit cost of all of them mm -hmm. because there's all these five and there what there are three or four that are all co coming in at 123 a unit as soon as he sells one of them at 140 a unit mm -hmm. then that might trigger yeah, a, a review of all. Yeah. I don't know. Why don't the other sales trigger things besides just his? Well, I mean, that's if we're basing it on sales, not just what one person sells it, the other comparable sales. Oh, I think that's a valid question. I, I suspect the answer is that you could point to little differences between some of these other properties, it's, it'd be hard to point to very, very much of a difference between this whole set of properties on Barry Street. Yeah, I, I just feel uncomfortable when something has not been inspected at all. Yeah. And numbers are being changed, com comping them to something else that you don't, we don't even know if it's been inspected or not. But Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the equity comps that we're comparing them to are other Rivellini properties. And some of them, there was, uh, I think one of them was a Jacobs property, too. Was it what? Jacobs. Oh, okay. What are you saying, Bob? Are you saying that this really raised the question about the general quality of the uh, work of the contractor? Yeah. <laughs> I think we had the same issue with the last uh, rate phrase. Okay, is there any other discussion? Is there a motion to be made? If we did the other ones, I think the motion would be accepted. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any dis further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Next up. Uh, the last one is a property at 26 Franklin Street. Uh, same situation as, as uh, with the Riverini properties. Um, this one, 
did attend the formal grievance. No changes were made. Um, as I started putting the, the report together and comping it out to eight comparables, um, as you can see, the assessment on this one is 179,000 per unit, um, and it seems to be falling above the 116 to 195,000 per unit for uh, typical sales. And do you have any sense for why that is? The assessment was too high. Why? Why? Why this came in at so much higher than that? Yeah, if they just missed this one. They believe they were inside on this one. So yeah, this one was measure inspected by uh, James Stewart. Um, let's see, what did they have? I think the depreciation seems to be fair on this one. Um, but when comparing it to what um, units are selling for that are similar in condition, um, it's it, it came in too high. Um, as you can see, the five there, uh, I think, are, are um, lower for similar properties. And this is it. I think it's so understated. It's just terrible. One, one question that I'm thinking, oh, is this, a, is this one unit of a condominium? It's a, no, it's a two, two it's a duplex. It's a duplex. It's a duplex. Oh, okay. So in the comments here on the back page on the top center where it says currently used as a SFD. Single family dwelling. Okay. But it does have, um, if you look right to the left of it, there are two kitchens. I see. So they can use, I mean, they can use it however they want, but it's still a duplex. Yeah, carry on. So um, generally speaking, does a single family home hold more value than a multifamily home? Typically, or vice, yes. Vice yes. versa. Typically. So, so if you were to, so if they were to take out one of these kitchens, then. We would comp it to single family homes. And yeah. would it be worth more money then? Most likely, yes. I, and it, until I did a you know full appraisal on it, I don't know, but typically, yes. Because then it would be a, a six bedroom house. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hmm? What? The bedrooms don't pay the price on any square footage, apparently not. The use of it would make a big difference, yes. Um, equity comparables up and down um, Franklin and St. Paul, Hillhead. Um, again, it falls above the, you know, the, the 155 to 160, 170 range. Um, I think the um, 19 and 24, because they're direct neighbors, are a good comparison as far as equity comparables go. Um, so this one I was recommending 155,000 per unit for a total assessment of $358,500. Uh, I'm sorry, 310. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong number. I'm not going to recommend the same number. Were there two higher one place? I'm sorry? And the comparable sales is actually two higher than them yep. and one close. Yep. <clears throat> it just seems like a big jump. When you look at the other ones in there, they go to 155. Mm -hmm. Like 160. Just looking at the numbers. Yep. And so to be clear, the alternative is um, if we say no, we don't accept this, then that puts the person back into the appeal process of having to come in and make their claim and have a committee inspect. Which would be tricky because then we also have our assessor also agreeing that it's too high. And then you get into a burden of proof thing and then you really don't care about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, but just looking at the numbers, I'm sorry, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> no, and and otherwise, if I'm not supposed to have that opinion, why be here? <laughs> You can have the opinion, they may not listen to you. That's the <laughs> I know, but you can't. I was like, oh my God, you can't have them say anything. You can't change it. Well, uh, as a staff, 
And I'm, I, I, so I have a different perspective on it, not completely. But my perspective is, is that the you know that we're not here as assessors, but that we're here to um, mediate conflicts and defer to our professional assessor. You know, the burden of proof becomes on someone who has the conflict to make that case that we shouldn't listen to the assessor. That our default is, in the particular case where there's no conflict at this point, that I would just, my inclination would be just by, just by doing, doing like a math equation within the students that are doing the assessment where there is no conflict in play. It may be a little easier to look at the assessment rather than the value, the per unit value as well of um, the two comps on Franklin Street, 19 and 24. I'm sorry, which page? The, uh, the equity, the, the, the equity, equity comparables. Mm -hmm. The equity sales. Yeah, so if you look at the equity comps, so that's what the, the assessments are of their neighbors. Yeah, there's still two, two that are right close. Yeah, and they're, they're next, door, next door neighbors at 310. I think that what Donna's saying is if it was at like 165, that would be smack dab in the middle, and that would make yeah. more sense. And that's your right to, to absolutely. The that's and feels, yeah, that's up to you. If you guys, if you feel that that's a better number, you know, if that's. But I was just told we can't make that number. We can do whatever we want. Oh, you can but raise it, lower it. Oh, yeah. The conflict will be. I mean, there's two getting, getting a huge reduction from their 358. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we can make a number here because the uh, taxpayer hasn't been here to make their right. case. But what we can do is vote no on, on the agreement if, if we don't think it is sensible, and then that, and then the case isn't resolved. It's still open for the person to make their case. So this is the number they've seen. Yes. They see the one you suggested. Yes. And that's why they're not here. <laughs> that's correct. So they, they were in agreement. We, we same same with the Rivellini properties. They condition or anything. We, we can't ask them if, what's the condition of the property, uh, when's the last time you rehabbed the property. None of that is known because there wasn't an inspection. Uh, this one there, there was. was. There was. There was. Yeah. Yeah. So this one was? Okay. Yeah. This yeah. One, so I wouldn't have a problem with this one. I'd have a problem with some of the so others. So I mean, if all of the ones to challenge, this one was inspected. Yeah. And there are, there are um, building permits are, are logged on here if there are uh, permits filed for each property. This one, the only thing that's been filed is um, um, a rooftop PV array. <clears throat> but you can tell. The other properties, if there was any work done, if there was a permit filed, you'll be able to tell, even if it wasn't inspected. Where is that on the curve? Uh, building permits ready to pre gotcha. assessment. I see. To get a new roof, do you have to get a building permit? I mean, just the asphalt, like? You're supposed to, yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to go on record and say Please that. Please don't look him up. You didn't know that. <laughs> well, it's just asphalt. Looked, they looked at the condition of yeah, the property. Yeah, they, they so. went around. They came inside. Right. They could tell what the Let's roof condition quiet. was. But, so, it, but that, the permitting process does help us to keep track yeah. of condition of homes, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. So we have an option here. We can take a motion to approve this, we could, like, take a motion to reject it, and and just vote on it either way. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve it. Second. All right, and is there any discussion? Yeah, Karen. Um, I just, I, I, these numbers seem very confusing to me, and I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it, and it's hard not to think about my own house, which is worth the same as what this is being proposed, and I cannot, I can't believe that. But I also don't know that much real, about real estate, and, and, I, and I think that the way that John put it is exactly right, so that, you know, we're not, we don't have the assess, assessor expertise, we're here to mediate conflict, we don't actually have a conflict in front of us. The assessor says this is what it should be. Right. I'm very comfortable deferring to the assessor's expertise yeah. here and just yeah. you know, going with his recommendation. Even though I think it's confusing and weird. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Second my fault. Yeah, it's not his fault. <laughs> Second that. Carrie, you're on the city council. You should be used to confusing and weird. <laughs> 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 
Sometimes it helps too. Um, if you have two properties you're looking at, um, feel free to call or email me, and I can send I can send you these cards. As you can see, they're really they're really detailed. I know, but this one is so sneaky. I live in that neighborhood, okay? <laughs> I've seen them working. Okay, anyway. Um, well, Donna, I think you're right. I think that that you've identified a real question that I'm not sure. I mean, is. I've been looking at a lot of numbers and comparing them because of our site visit. Right. And so I, when I look at these numbers and compare them, I say it's not that out of whack. A little bit, but not. Well, um, anyway, but. So my okay. question, but I, the point I'm going to get at. We have to be anonymous. Uh, and, 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 no, we don't have to be anonymous. The, the <laughs> point I'm getting at is that. Uh, I'm not sure if the Board of Civil Authority has to vote on a decision like this where the assessor just decides to change the assessment. I think that it's within the power of the assessor to simply change the assessment and have and the property owner would then just withdraw the appeal. And I don't know that it even requires us to, uh, to vote. And just the territory, I, it really, everything about this whole session of going through this with the BCA has been bizarre so far. Um, but my concern is just that we have some sort of affirmative statement in the back of the grand list book since it has already been recorded. And there was a challenge that it seems like there's got to be something to fill that vacuum. Well, and I think that something might just be withdrawn based on uh, assessors change in the value. But that's not where we are for these because they're, these are on the agenda. But I think this is something else that we might look for some legal advice on. So I'll, I'll follow up on that. Because yeah, because if there were if there are a number more just like this, you can save everybody here a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We so have we a have motion. motion. Yes, we have a motion and a second. All, all those in favor. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. Okay. That was done. Now we have two reports. Um, which, uh, why don't we do 11 River Street first, uh, the Caribou property? Are there no more copies of these? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Inspection committee members, Mark, Mary Hooper, Mark Leopold, and Sal Alfano. Mark, they left you high and dry. I know, I noticed that earlier. <laughs> everybody who's here now is here at the first meeting, right? Yeah. I just want to make sure everybody gets well. Um, just to refresh people's recollection, this is the one where the it's the it's a tiny contaminated property, and the report says we should put it down to zero. Yeah. 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 Second. Okay. So the motion is to approve it. As a second, is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. And the Atchison property on Spring Street. Carrie, you're here. I am here. All right. Why don't you tell us about this <laughs> one? There's a little um, more to this one. Sure. So we inspected this property. We only inspected the outside. We didn't go inside because the property owner's um, argument was that the land value was too high relative to the size of the building and to comparable properties. So we looked at. Um, the other comparable properties that the landowner had, that the property owner had provided, as well as what the assessor had provided, and um, we were we were not swayed. Basically, we did not feel that they provided enough evidence to warrant changing it. That there are 
that there are differences in the land value of between in, in comparable properties, but that the overall assessment of the comparable properties was similar and that it didn't really make a difference at the end of the day um, when you looked at the size of the building and the location and all of that. So our recommendation was to uphold the assessment as presented. Okay, is there a motion? I move to accept the committee's recommendation. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And we are done with our business for tonight. Um, we can uh, not adjourn, but what's the word we recess? Recess to our next, to next week.